The following episode of Forum Cup comes from the Build a PC subreddit. This is a pretty typical post. Someone asking, you know, I put something together on PC Part Picker, and does it look good? I have a 1,300 euro budget. What do you guys think? And to be fair, it's all over the place. This is an underpowered i5, an overpowered cooler for this week six thread. Crazy overpowered, or should I say... I mean, if you're getting a $148 or Euro CPU, I do not recommend a 300 Euro motherboard. One stick of RAM, which means it's not in dual channel. Uh, it, I, I don't need to go on and on. I, 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 I just think this whole thing is kind of a mess. And I got to be clear, uh, I'm not here to hate on the OP. My goal is to correct 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 misconceptions and that doesn't mean just dunking on people no one knows who the op is how much experience he has and i wasn't gonna do this episode but what i saw was kind of everyone just calling the op an idiot and i was surprised that after i mean i think over a week or i guess a few days after posting no one had really helped this guy out so why don't I do it? Why don't I just take a little bit of time to throw together a rig in real time for you guys? I mean, I just did a podcast with David Does Tech. Check that out. The last episode of Broken Silicon where we talk about PC building advice. And, you know, it. I've done this so many times. I think I could throw together a budget build in almost no time. So let's just get to it. All right, I'm just going to use Newegg, and I'm going to do this really quickly. It's worth emphasizing that this isn't meant to be gospel of the ultimate budget build for this holiday season, but this will be me throwing one together really quickly, and hopefully this at least gives you a window into my mindset when I'm building. This is more about giving you a fishing rod to fish for you know the rest of your life than just giving you a fish. If you want to follow this build one-to-one, -one, I guess you probably will be able to. Uh, we'll see by the time I'm done how confident I am in my work. But this, again, is just to give you an idea of how I go about doing this. And keep in mind, I'm going to mostly use Newegg. I mean, if you, you really want to look at Micro Center and other websites at the same time to cross-reference deals. But anyways, let's get to it. So right off the bat, the first thing I'm going to look for is an R5-1600. And this is for a few reasons number one comes with a stock cooler number two it really is just the best price performance now i know what you're thinking here a lot of people are recommending the 3600 but here's what it comes down to this is double the price and it is not double the gaming performance it just isn't and some people might say get zen 2 for future proofing look these are both six core 12 thread cpus whenever this becomes obsolete uh, it will be around the same time this does. If you want a future proof, I would actually recommend, I mean, the next gen consoles won't be out for a year from now. Just get this and then you can upgrade to an 8, 12 or 16 core in a few years when, you know, the game engines are fully taking advantage of the 16 threads of the next gen console. So I'm going with an R5 1600 and Let's just see here. Can we see some suggestions of what other people are buying in motherboards? Nope. Let's just go to this, actually. Well, now let's do the full process. So we're getting an R5-1600. And then we're going to go AM4. And I'm going to look for a... Well, let, uh, I'll be fair. I, I'll just go AM4 motherboard. Because, you know, if you're new, maybe you don't know the name of the chipset. All right. So AMD motherboards. That should filter out some of it. I'm not going to filter out any of the sizes yet, actually. Um... Let's just start there, and then I am just going to go lowest price. Again, this is, well, what the heck is this thing here? That's goofy. Not what we want, that's for sure. Uh, we want to filter out the other sockets. We only want AM4. You'd think they would know that by typing in AM4, but I guess not. All right, now let's just kind of scroll here. Um, you know, I recommend going above these for upgradability to higher performance CPUs in the future. So let's see, do we have chipsets? Let's filter it down to, eh, I'll keep an X570, although I think we all know that's not what we're going to get. I do recommend going B450 or higher. Okay, and now let's see. You want something with decent reviews. Um, 
Okay, so this one right away is kind of sticking out to me. It has a bunch of reviews. It's not just like 10, and it's above four eggs. All right, let's see. And how much more would it cost for us to get something with Wi-Fi? $40? Well, that'll be up to you. It depends on if you already have a Wi-Fi card, one of those USB Wi-Fi things, if you want to get one with Wi-Fi built in. If you already have something, then you don't need it. But So let's just go with this because we're assuming complete price performance. Let's see. All right, this has plenty of USB, which, as time goes on, I think is pretty important. Those VRMs do not look that strong, though. Let me go back and see if there's something just a tad better than what I was just looking at. All right. Um, hmm. I'm going to just, and again, this is just on the fly looking here. I'm going to go with this. Micro ATX is usually best price performance. It has two PCIe slots, although this one is 2.0, so there will be a performance hit. This really isn't for Crossfire, but uh, this seems to have most of the features you would look for. So let's just go with that. About 80 bucks. Again, what you're going to want to do, though, is cross-reference it around other motherboards of similar price and then go with you know, the one that you feel is the highest reviewed and the most reliable. But this is kind of a good starting point. All right. We already have the cooler. We now have that. Now we want DDR4 memory. Again, I, I could search for a specific stick, but I'm going to assume, you know, I'm pretending I'm someone who hasn't done this that often. Lowest price. And again, I use Newegg because their search features really are the, the best. Uh, they usually find what I'm looking for. Now, this is dual channel, so we're going to check that real quick. And lowest price. And let's see. So right away, this is sticking out to me. Um, it's pretty good value, and there. But you know what? I'm actually, hmm. I'm actually going to check eight gigabytes per module at this point. I think you do want sixteen gigs. I, I really do. All right. Let's see. So I, I don't know this brand. It has good reviews. Worth considering, but I. It's usually not that much more expensive to go with a more reputable brand. Let's keep going. Okay, so what speed is this? Now, RAM speed definitely matters with Zen processors. So you don't want to skimp too much, even in a budget build. At least I don't think you do. You know, let's do this. Let's save ourselves some time. And let's actually start limiting speeds. Because I think you want something I, I recommend above that. So let's just... Go all the way up to here. God knows we're probably not going to get the top speed, people. But let's see. Okay. Keep scrolling a little bit. Hmm. What speed is that? 3,000? Um... That's sticking out to me. That's sixty-five dollars, sixty-three dollars. Hmm. This one looks much nicer. All right, let's look at this. Not sure I like the camo, but I guess it's up to personal taste, right? <laughs> His RAM. Okay, let's see, and then let's check the timings on this. Sixteen, eighteen, thirty-eight. That's the voltage, and let's check that other G skill that looked decently cheaper at least from the outside again i'm just doing this quick people oh okay it's quite literally about the same so i guess it might come down to preference but i'm gonna go with this yeah all right and how well will that match this yeah whatever right so now you've got your processor your motherboard your ram now we're gonna jump over here and Let's look at storage. I'm literally just going to do SSD, internal. Let's see. And uh, let's. I'm going to be honest. I actually recommend not skimping on the SSD early. I know it's upgradable, but I just, I don't see, you know, it's, I think it's a good idea to have a decently fast boot drive from the start that you're happy with and then to add further drives later so you don't need to reinstall Windows. Again, this is just my opinion. All right, let's see. Okay, so... Well, how are we filtered? Yeah, let's, uh, let's go to lowest price. 
I've already filtered out the size. And again, I'm kind of looking for a reputable brand for an NVMe, if I'm being honest right now. Hmm. Interesting. This looks... All right, so how much cheaper are these other ones? And this is what I always do. $80. All right, so now I'm going to duplicate this. Scroll back down to the... Intel is a very reputable brand for storage. Surprise, surprise. Okay. And now I'm seeing... Is the extra, you know, $18 worth it? That's what I'm doing really quick. Oh, wow. That's really slow. <laughs> yeah, the extra $18 is worth it. Uh, boom, baby. That's what we're going to go with. So let's make sure, again, this has a slot for it. Oh, there it is. Let's see. M.2. Okay, M.2. So you had to make sure it can fit in there because every now and then, I mean, almost every motherboard comes with that now, but it's worth checking. All right, so there, boom, 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 boom. Already have that. And now we go to Newegg again. And let's look at graphics cards. Right off the back, I'm thinking RX 5700. These have been fantastic deals lately. Yeah. Well, you know, let's do this. Let's open up this here. And then I'm just going to jump over and we're going to start adding up how much we've spent already. So about $101 for the processor. Uh, about $80 for the motherboard. And remember, this should be able to support something a bit stronger in the future. $65 for the RAM. And remember, you can buy two more sticks in the future if you want to upgrade that. $99 for a one terabyte drive that is substantially faster than what you used to be able to get. Wait, right, yeah, let's see where we're at at this point. So we're spending $345 here. Okay, this is when you start wondering how much you want to spend on your graphics card because you're almost there. Hmm, all right, let's duplicate. How much are these bad boys going for now? Always got to check this. It really depends. A lot of people would pair this with the R5 1600. Hmm. Yeah. It's hard to say, right? You can spend another 200 bucks basically, and get a 5700. And to be honest, let's do this quick. Again, this is how I would probably do it in real life. I mean, let's just look at one of the latest games, you know, just real quick. Go here, performance, scroll down. 1080p is what we're aiming for, 570. Oof, yeah, Red Dead Redemption 2 needs some updates. So in this game, the 5700 is getting about double the perf more. Wow, yeah, more than double the performance in this game. Now, that's really interesting, isn't it? I, I got to say... If this is a gaming build, you get double the RAM. It's a little more it's more than double the price, but I really got to recommend going with the 5700 here. I just do feel it's worth the extra money. Now, I don't like that these eggs are the, yeah, I don't like the 3 eggs for those. I would probably recommend this. Yep, this is what I would recommend. Requires a 6 pin and an 8 pin. All right, so now we know pretty much what we're dealing with here. And, you know, it comes with uh, Borderlands 3, even if you have to use the horrible Epic Game Store. You know, this is a gaming build. So, again, I am recommending spending the extra bit of money for the 5700 considering the performance in the latest games. I mean, it's to the point where you could even game in 4K like uh, Xbox One X or something. Well, better than an Xbox One X here. Turn down a couple settings. Even in, yeah, in 1080p, you're going to get a locked... Yeah, okay. Uh, I'm set on it. I think the 5700 is the better deal. And now it's time to look for cases. We're getting a micro ATX motherboard. So let's go for a case. I actually already know what I'm going to look for. And this is my mindset. If you don't like this, you're free to do what you want to do. But this is actually one of my go-to starter cases. It's very small. 
and the money for the money, it's a very, very reasonable price. Okay, it comes with a fan on the back. It has. I actually used to own one of these. I actually, still do. I think somewhere. Look at that. You already come with an outtake and an intake fan. That's important, and this can fit a full-length graphics card. If you want to, you can get a much stronger fan for the front in the future, and that will blow air directly into your graphics card. You can even, if you want to, add a side fan here. I did once. I had to use zip ties, but I did that. You have room for expansion. And again, if you actually look, let's see if they have this here. If you actually look at the size of this case, it's pretty small volume. It's actually smaller than a lot of ITX cases I'm aware of. So this is what I'm going to recommend. So if we jump over here now, let's add the graphics card plus 350 plus... 40. Eh, good job, Tom, with your spelling. And we're looking at a $735 build so far. I mean, guys, this is a, you know, kind of high settings 4K gaming build. And that R5 is going to last you. All righty. Now we just need a power supply. And I own this, so I know this can fit full power supplies. Well, let's just go to components. Power supplies. Hmm. There's a lot of things to consider. Actually, there really isn't a lot to consider with these. What we know is that this uses, if you overclocked it, it could use about 200 watts or so. This is 65 watts. So what are we at now? 265. Throw in another 100 watts for the rest of your components, people. And maybe another 50 watts for safety. So this really, I, I really do, and this is my opinion, think people way over spec power supplies for their builds all right so right off the bat here and then i'm gonna just find now 80 plus doesn't always necessarily mean more reliable but what i do find is that it has a very very high chance of getting you more reliable power supplies if you check those boxes all right again though that i'm steering clear of raid max <laughs> Don't like the look of this. See, Sonic really is hit or miss, in my opinion. I know some people swear by him, but that's just its just not my experience, people. So I'm trying to help you out. Okay. 80 plus white plus gold for this one. Hmm. See, we're starting to get somewhere here. Well, let me just go one step further and see. I think maybe let's actually just remove that. We only want bronze and higher. Power supplies really are reasonably priced at this point, if you ask me. Okay. Kind of a sucker for Corsairs, if I'm being honest. Yeah, we want more than 450 watts, though. You might upgrade in the future. It's getting a little higher, though, for a budget build. Well, you know, let's build this thing to last, why don't we? So let me scroll all the way down. We're looking at about $60 here for most of these. All right. I'm going to look here. See what this is capable of. All right. Let's open that one. Then let's just keep looking a little longer here. Hmm. Yeah, that's probably going to do it. So let's look at this. How much more is it for another 100 watts? 15 bucks. Well, what does that get you? What you really want to look at. So this comes with two 8-pin connectors. That's enough for your graphics card. And that's good in case in the future you get something a bit stronger. Like you get a 300-watt card. You have a 100-watt. You don't even have a 100. You have a 65-watt CPU. That, you know, you're still leaving over, over 100 watts. And Corsair doesn't really underspec their stuff usually. Yeah. I'm thinking this is probably the one to go with. Let's just do one last check all the way back to the beginning. What were the cheapest options again? Like you know, making double checking what is our extra money getting us? All right, so let's check this one maybe. 550 watt. Rosewill has been all right for me in the past. So you're paying 10 extra dollars. Let's see the rail here. Do they just show a side shot? That would be nice. Okay. 
Now, this is actually what you want to look at. Now, they don't show it there on this one. Let's see how many amps we got. Okay. Well, I wish they had... Hmm. That can't be correct on that one, by the way. All right. So then let's check. Unfortunately, they don't really... So 2 times 6 plus 2 pin. Okay. That's usually what you want to look for is how many 6, 8 pins do they include. That's usually actually... I mean, they can really call these wattages whatever they want. They'll have 1,000 watt power supplies with one 6 pin, and that's because it really can't handle that much. All right. How many reviews? 150... I mean, these are kind of the same, if I'm being honest. This one's modular. 80 plus bronze. Yeah, honestly, I'm going to go with the Rose Wheel. All right, and we're out, baby. Rose Wheel again, I guess. And so if we add that up, we are looking at a $785 bill. And it really is that simple. And look at where we are now. The original build the OP put together was like, 12 to 1400 euro and what i put together was under 800 dollars and 50 percent better this is really the sweet spot and notice what i was doing i didn't say i have an 800 dollar budget or a 1000 dollar budget i was willing to spend between 600 to 1100 but i had a target 60 hertz gaming at least 1080p best price performance for gaming and I wanted a certain amount of storage. I, I, I do recommend a terabyte. And what we got to was under 800. I would have spent more if it made sense. But for building at the time, that's where we were. And there's no need to spend more. There's no need to spend another $200. That CPU is fine. It's going to go obsolete just as fast as the 3600. And then you can upgrade to a Zen 3 12 core with that motherboard. Um, the only other thing I would say is maybe if you really want a future proof, consider some kind of x470 motherboard maybe and uh or i mean maybe even x570 if you can get a, one with decent vrms for 200 bucks or less which you can sometimes but in general it's just i think that motherboard is going to be good enough for what a budget gamer would choose but yeah maybe maybe a beefier motherboard for upgrading in the future and maybe like a 600 watt or higher psu but honestly 500 watts is more than anyone almost ever needs. And I gave it 550. It has two 8 pins, right? That's enough to upgrade to almost any high-end graphics card in the future. If the graphics card uses 300 watts, and then you even have a 150-watt overclocked CPU, you're looking at 450 watts, 100 watts left over for the rest of the system. And I know some people are mad. They're like, you got to overspec it. It's like, that's not it's rare that you'll ever have the cpu and the gpu at max power usage either especially while gaming you'll probably be using about 350 watts 550 is enough but that's the other thing to consider there's room for extra ram slots that's it we spent almost half as much as the op and we have 50 percent greater gaming performance that's how you do it um and so it's then that was a good time to build i guess that's the last thing i will say we're going into the holiday season. I think next year is going to have some cool stuff like always, but I think this this is really the time to go for it. The only thing I really see coming down in price next year by a decent amount is probably memory, and I left room to add two more slots of RAM. I guess, yeah, if you were really on a budget with this build, I would say go down to like an RX 578 gigabyte for like 150 less if you can swing that. And then get two times four gigabytes. And then if you did that, you could probably save another 200 bucks and get a $600 bill. Yeah. So I guess if you're really on a budget, that's what I would suggest. But otherwise, I think I did a good job. It's not about having a budget. It's about having a performance target and hitting it and not spending more than you need to at the moment. Hope you enjoyed a look into how I would do a budget build uh, for gaming this holiday season, this winter. Um, if you liked it, share it. Tell me what you think in the comments, like it, and of course, consider supporting me on Patreon, listen to Broken Silicon, that's where it's what some people say the action's at for my channel. All right, thank you, everybody. Now, now, now. You